we're back here uh, on our mastery workbook for the sewing end of the machine and we are on video five and so what we're going to be talking today about is the um, stitch regulator and then we're going to go into some of the features that the 790 and 880 have and also i think the 590 has yes. some of the same features <clears throat> some of them so um <clears throat> We're going to go into that a little bit more, and but we're going to start out with the stitch regulator. Now, as we had said before, the stitch regulator is available. You can get it for a 435, 475, 480, 570, 590s. 535. 535, yeah. Um, I always forget about the 535. It's a nice machine. Yeah, it is. Um, the 770, 790, and 880 is what the, is compatible with the stitch regulator. Mm -hmm. Bernina has, is the only machine that has this available. It has a patent on this mm -hmm. and it's been out, I want to say since 2000, maybe mm. 2002. It's more I, information than I have. <laughs> yeah, I think, because I remember I had bought my 200, um, embroidery machine and it was not out at that time uh, so I, it came out after that and that was around 2000 um so the Bernina the stitch regulator it looks like this little odd shaped foot it will attach to your machine just like any other Bernina foot except that it has a um, plug-in that you will plug in on the smaller, the lower end machines, it's kind of up yeah, underneath. Yeah, it's under here on the fours. Uh-huh. On the the other, and I think on the five seven. On the five, it's got, it's not under under, but it's in the back. It's in the back more. Yeah. So you're going to plug that in. So go ahead and put that on. Okay, yeah. Well, and then we, Lisa's showing me, we have, there's three different feet that come with it. You have a closed toe. You have the op the open toe, like a C shape, and you have an echoing foot. Or couching. Or, or couching, yeah. Now they will go on, they just slide right on like that. If you want it off, you push in the two little knobs on the side, pull it off. So very simple to um, put the feet on. Now the the open toe one, I I have pretty well. You can see a little bit better, but sometimes, especially when you're starting, it can that open toe can get caught underneath the thread. It's good for applique. Yeah, yeah, doing like our um, Tony Whitney. Tony Whitney. Yeah, if you're free motion stitching the ends of applique. So when I put that foot on, the machine automatically recognized that I had the stitch regulator on. My feed dogs were down. If I had put that foot on with the feed dogs up, it would have put a warning up right. and said, put your feed dogs down. Yeah. Okay. And you also highlighted, chose the foot, the 42 foot. I didn't have to touch it. The, the it, it just 42 went into does. It. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So now if you look at this, it has... Um, on the right hand side, it has, it's showing you that you have a straight stitch or you have the uh, zigzag stitch. If you're wanting to do the zigzag, and we have today for purposes of showing the, the video, if you're going to do zigzag, you have to remember to put in your zig, your um, nine millimeter foot. And then you would, of course, highlight that that's what you have in. Mm -hmm. Uh, very important because you will break <laughs> needles if you don't. So you also, if you look below your letter I, you have a little thing that's like a megaphone that you can turn off the sound or turn it on. Now, I would suggest that you leave it on at the beginning. Once you get used to this, you can turn that off. So what it, Yeah, go ahead. It beats at me a lot. Because you're going too fast. I go too fast. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so hey, what hey. it's telling you is that, hey, 
I can't keep up with your the speed of your movement. So slow it down a little bit. Now, if you look right below that, you have mode two. What mode two is, is that it will not start sewing until you start moving the fabric. You're also going to use, I prefer to use the um, on and off uh, mode in here. Oh, turning it on and off. Instead of using the foot pedal, using that yes. um, to work this with this uh, foot. So now, so if, yeah, let's show them what number two will do. Okay, so I brought my bobbin thread up. So if you're in mode two, why is it there? Okay. All right. You're going to have to hold the button in until you see the red light and you're going to start moving. If you stop moving and you stop moving up to, I think it's seven seconds, it will, it will automatically go off and you'll have to restart it again. Did you see the flashing? I when too when fast. it starts flashing, that's saying, it's telling you you're going too fast. One. Now let's look at no, mode one. What mode one is going to do is that the needle, the minute you turn it on, the needle starts going up and down. Do you see how it keeps going? And until you move that, that fabric, it will keep moving up and down, which can cause some knots on the back. And thread breaking. And look at here. See now you see the the red where it's flashing. Because I was going too fast. So I come around here and I'm being good and I'm not. There it goes again. And do you notice that it's the speed that she's moving her hand? The hands, uh, if she moves fast. It's going to go faster. So it's learning how to regulate the movement of your hands and, and the speed that you want to be at. Okay. Now you use this for Tony Whitney. I do. And that, what mode do you use? I use one. The one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? I am uncomfortable with two. <laughs> it always feels like it's sort of, boom. Like, sort of like your balance. That's right. <laughs> I, d I don't like that. <laughs> so, no, two, it, it, I don't know how to describe it. it. It feels like I'm going faster than it is. So sometimes that first stitch uh -huh. doesn't catch with me. Uh -huh. Whereas if it's idling, I know where it's going to start. Mm -hmm. And I get that first stitch at the beginning of the applique piece I'm trying to get down. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So that basically is all there is to the stitch regulator on at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it's, again, it's practice. This is, you're still going to have to practice. And let's show people what you do at the end. Okay. So when you get done with your stitching, take your finger, put your foot up, your needle up, take your finger, slide it underneath, pull out some top thread. Lower your foot, needle down, needle up, foot up, and now you can pull your bobbin thread up, and now you don't have a knot on the back side. So you'll have a nice clean end where you finished, because you pulled that up. And, and see where I started? I pulled up the bobbin thread. And you see right here and here? where she was, she had me stop while I was on stitch regulator mode and she said it'll form little knots, that's what it does. So if you stop in one position too long, you get those little knot looking things. Okay. And then sometimes that can cause your thread to break. Yes. So you can then, once you get this on the top, you can tie this into a tiny little knot. So you could go like this and then use a, side threading needle and bury that and poof, it's finished.
Anyway. Okay. Sorry, that had nothing to do with Bernina. Now let's do the next exercise. <laughs> All right. Now what we're going to do is on page 37, Lisa is going to do a, um, the, using the zigzag stitch. Oh. And she's going, she drew out, drew out a pattern. This one right design here. Design that's on, yeah, on the page. Okay. And she's going to be using her zigzag. Be kind, people. I've never done this before. And you can use different stitch widths and lengths too on that with this. Now the natural reaction would be to try to turn your fabric to go along that curve. But you don't turn your fabric. You always keep your fabric in the same type of position. That's what I see people doing in class. They, they'll want to, they'll get to a certain point and they'll want to turn their fabric. So now I have to go back and why would you do this? <laughs> Same reason you use the the balance foot. Okay. <laughs> I would not do this. But you know, whatever. To each their own. Maybe somebody else will. I don't know. Okay, so now I have to well this, fill this you in. know, it really would work nicely like for thread painting. Yeah. If you were doing some thread painting and, and you wanted maybe a bird, you wanted some texture in there. some of these exercises just because they can. <laughs> Not because anybody would actually do this. <laughs> They're like, look at this cool thing we can do. We can do this. <laughs> thing. <laughs> doesn't look like it. Wash. <laughs> I did the bestest you I could did. do. You did good. I made the thing. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. I can see, you know, with us, with quilters, I think especially, well, or whatever you get into doing, you you get stuck in doing the same the same things over and over. So you don't play with the machines like you should, like you should, really. So if I was going to do that, I would not do it with a zigzag. I would do it with a straight stitch. And filling it in and that way. And fill it in over, yeah. Because yeah. I think that's weird looking, but hey, that's me. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I th it's kind of messy. But also, if you Then look, doesn't it look like they did it with a straight it stitch? It looks like they first did it with a straight stitch. Yeah, and then because, filled, and then with, filled oh, it. Okay. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Well, we didn't read the directions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. That's, 
Let's move on. We looked at the picture. I like looking at pictures. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to page number 39. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to do get into this some is actually really fun. fun stuff. This is which we don't need this for. No, we need 40. We got 40. 40s. Now, this is going into um, your 790. Ooh. This 590 no. app, it does not have sideways. No. Um, it, and 880. Mm -hmm. And this is what they call sideways motion. Now, with sideways motion, what you have to have is you have to use the number 40 C foot. Um, without, it will, it actually won't work. Mm -mm. So it needs that 40 C foot. You are going to go into your decorative stitches. Okay. Um, let's see what one, what your do. stitch folders that you have that work with the 40 C are these with this with the plus multiple direction symbols. Yeah. So that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Which stitch does it want us to do? That's what I'm looking at, and it doesn't really tell us. Uh, menus 201. Oh, this is um, this is this is showing us how to multi-direction a regular stitch. We need to start with utility stitches. So okay, or or we could do this again. We'll do that. Okay, and then. Now you're going to go into I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And then you're going to go into your R. And then you take this. And, or you could use these, but yeah. you could. That. So I'll stitch it that way. Or like that. I'll stitch it that way. Do you want to see? Let's do it. Let's do it, you guys. You know, um, remember in Bernina, the Bernina one with that we did this in, and uh, you put on a patch yes. on a knee? Cool. Way cool. Yeah, because you didn't have to worry about navigating no. denim underneath uh -uh. your you Okay, know, now go up. Go, go to that one. Or All the way up or just to there, here? There, yeah. You could actually make a hexy shape. You could. How cool is that? Is that? Isn't it neat? And you do that with any of the stitches if you go into the I button. <clears throat> and use this little R thing. But, did we do all of this? Support fabric, attach, yeah, we did all that. Okay, but the multi-directional stitches themselves, what is this, this is an exercise? Multiple, yeah. Combi mode, um, multiple direction and combi mode, you can do all of that. So, like if we wanted to go here, I'll just, down here um let's close that we'll go to combi we'll do this and this and i don't know that okay and then we'll go here now you want to do you want to be at the very start of where or does yeah, it not matter really? i mean it doesn't really matter but yeah okay so let's do Let's, let's do this. I'm gonna make three of them.
Oh. <laughs> I'm just doing another one. Oh, you did click it. Now, do you know that when you get down to that blue, you could push your, your pattern end and it will, there it goes. you don't have to really watch because it will automatically end. Yeah. Oh, look, I just blocked it right now. Oh! Look what we did. So it just turns the most of one stitch. I mean, it turns the one stitch. Oh! oh. Look at us learning Super stuff! Learning. <laughs> <laughs> so then, if I wanted to. And so now it's back. I could go. Ooh, look at there. So you could move individual stitches in different uh -huh. directions. Yeah. Oh, and I got one heck of a mess going on right now. Because <laughs> I switched too soon. But look at that. So we went straight, and then we went in the middle of this one. We turned it sideways, and then straight, and then we went sideways and straight. <laughs> fun yeah I mean it is and again it's just something that you're gonna have to play with to to see how it works but let's go into straight stitch um uh, okay yep um and then go back into that and and like act like you're going to sew a patch on like on where, where a pair of uh, jeans. Go into oh, your, go into, yeah, okay. and show them how you can. Okay. So, uh, I need to reset my needle. Maybe draw. Okay. A lot, you know, a square, you want a, square? a box, yeah. Right. And we pretending that that was a patch. We'll go up here. We got plenty of space up here. So, so I have to sew a patch on my jeans. And I'm going this way. I mean, if you were sewing a patch on your jeans, you'd do probably a zigzag, yeah. but whatever. You guys get the idea. I'm on a straight stitch. So now I'm gonna go this way. Check that out. <laughs> Just cool. I am not pushing it. It's doing it itself. Okay. So if you, you know, had a, like a denim jean leg that you got squished onto your free arm and you weren't going to be able to navigate that around, you could use this yeah. and do whatever you want. It, it yeah. Would, yeah, it's cool to do that. Okay. So that is that. Now let's look at maybe go out of there and let's go into the decorative stitches and pick out one of the um sideways motion sideways stitches motion, yeah so these are the sideways motion stitches like i said the ones with the multi-directional arrows let's see let's do um what's in there let's do that one that one's cool this one's cool too that one okay we'll do that one If you were doing this on a bigger piece, the only thing you would want to do is keep the weight off so that the feed dogs can do their deal. So if you've got like, say you're, you're quilting a baby quilt or something, you can haul up the end of that baby quilt so the weight doesn't drag down on your feed dogs. And then, poof, you're making candy canes in there. Or, there's one that's like really big. Yeah, you did this it on one? a... There you go. Look at that. So 
how about that for like a quilting stitch? There's a lot of them in here that would be really nice quilting stitches. Meander. Oh, these are all, all of these are meander, different woods. So this one, you, you didn't want to have to do your own meandering. Now this is more of a micro stipple. It's, it's pretty, pretty tight. breadcrumb and you can get to different pattern, different designs. There we go. Look at how big this one is. Yeah, that's cool. So you're quilting the table runner and you want it to be pretty quilting. And there you go. It's not overwhelming but enough to call it quilting. You do your borders or your sashing or something with this. It's nice looking. All you gotta do is aim it so that it, it stays in between the sashing lines. Easy peasy. I tried to do the bear one time. Yeah? He, he was a little... He was wonky doodle? Wonky doodle. <laughs> Okay. Because I think some of them you it, you have to keep them in within a you know like a you'd have two lines drawn in kind yeah of you gotta keep in, them in between the two in yeah. between those but you can if you look at your um, your let me see where I am here all over directional stitching you can even form your own yeah. fabric you know make your own fabric. Well, let's do this one. Page 41, the connecting stitches. Let's do this one. All right. Okay. Are you ready? Open commie mode. Delete any stitches. So clear. Commie mode is open. Okay? Ready? Mm-hmm. I deleted my stitches. Now what? All right. Select decorative stitches, select menu 701, the 700 folder, and select 701. Okay. And um, select one? stitch 767, 767 two times. 767? Uh huh. One, two. Okay. okay. Now select your eye. Yep and engage the mirror image left and right. Okay. On the second pattern you did that, yeah. Select the eye, engage mirror image left and right on the second pattern, mm -hmm. and that's what you did. Mm -hmm. The needle stop and start points are not the same mm -hmm. for the two stitches, and a jump stitch will be sewn joining them which is a big long, mm -hmm. okay. Select the overview combi mode to create a continuous stitch. So you would move and drag and drop the second pattern to line up the first one as shown. So you wanna, you wanna take this and move it over to the first one. And how do I do that? I need more directions. I know. I'm in combo. Start combi points are not the same. Select, drag and drop the second pattern, the blue one, to line up 
with the ver with the first one as shown. Use the stylus and drag and drop on screen or use the stitch with the multi knob. Thank you. <laughs> multi, yeah, the width. Now move it over to line up, I think with this. Oh, no. 